What's going on, y'all? Y'all know it's the Dating 101 Card Games in collaboration with the Homeboys Conversation. We got T, ganged up T. What's going on? You know, you know going back over here. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got Miss Siobhan Carter. She actually went viral some weeks ago also. Mm -hmm. I did. So basically, yeah. I got to find me a video that actually takes me live there, huh? Since everybody <laughs> else can be, be on their going viral stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm the only one not on the viral video at this point. I Maybe guess I'm so. It wasn't even trying. You got. Yeah. You can't do it trying to get on here. You yeah, I, I think yourself. I'm just going to have to, like, you know, I'm going to have to do a dance one. Like. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go ahead. Go, 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 go ahead. Matter of fact, you can't dance either, so that'll make it even better. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Jackie? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Last week, we got uh, Big Toe said I look like a little girl. All oh, things. We kind of okay. had something going on, a lot of different complications last week, but we back. Y'all know how it is. I'm going to get straight into it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we actually ended on a uh, we actually ended on a question, but I didn't really like how we ended it because I felt like we didn't elaborate good enough on the topic. So um, some weeks ago, a couple went viral because the guy actually proposed in his car they drive it home and she and he proposed to her and the woman get to letting her know that you know it's been 10 years why would you wait now the guy even mentioned like look you you you've been asking for this she said yeah that was five years ago five years ago i was ready now i'm no longer ready you didn't prepare for it you kind of just wing it and just hand me a ring the guy began to call her ungrateful, unappreciative. He called her just about every name in the book, but a child of God. So basically, I want to know if y'all seen the video, you know, um, hopefully y'all can elaborate. But if y'all haven't seen the video, that was the much I was tonight. But Siobhan, I'm going to start with you because you have now seen the video. What was your opinion about it after seeing the video? So it seemed like that situation was the straw that broke the camel's back. I felt like she had already kind of checked out of the relationship. Um, but then the way that he chose to propose, I think that added insult to injury. So she was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done. Like, what am I really holding on to? That's kind of the way she was being. That's what I got from it. Like she was already tired of him. Maybe she was just staying because of convenience or whatever. But after that, him proposing in a car and not really making anything special out of it, I think that just took her to another level of wanting okay. to get out of it. Hey, did you want to elaborate on the answer you said last yeah, week? That's, yeah. that's cute that you feel like that for her. <laughs> I beg to differ because. <laughs> Part of the video after he did it, she was like, I'm leaving immediately. She said she's leaving. And for her to just up and leave like that over something like that, I feel like she might have had a dude on the side, like I said last time. And once he this dude proposed, she probably thought, like when she wanted to get married in the beginning and he didn't propose, she probably thought, well, you know what? He never going to do it. I'm comfortable here. You know, he's taking care of whatever he's taking care of. I'm going to stay here, but I'm going to do me on the side now since I know he don't see it going no further than this. So she probably went and got her another dude. Once this dude took got his, got serious and proposed to her, now she's in a dilemma. What's she going to do? She got to choose. Do she want this side dude or is she going to stay with this dude and suffer? So she going to go with the side dude because I guess that's the dude feel, fulfilling her needs when this dude not. So that's how I feel about it. She was too quick to leave. And she getting proposed to. I don't think y'all understand how we can. It may seem quick to y'all, but we be contemplating. I stuff agree. Way she before probably contemplated. I felt like that's what he was saying. Um, I feel like like I, I agree with both of y'all. I feel like that was the uh, the straw that broke the camera's back. I feel like um, she she been checked out, like you said, she been checked out for years, but it was comfortable. But I also feel like T. I felt like she had another dude, and she been telling that dude, "Look, just give us some time. Let let us. Once it comes to that that place where 
I can finally step away without looking like the bad guy, then that's what I'm gonna do. But right now, just just have patience. Him proposing changed the whole narrative. Like, nah, like this this is my reason. I feel like she used that as a reason to do what, like you said, she was already planning on going. Like that's 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 because like you said, she she was ready to go immediately. Like it wasn't even no hesitation. It was like, look, when I get home, I'm packing. But where you gonna go at? Yeah. Like oh boy. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't agree. I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think it means she had to have some another dude on the side. Like I feel it, sure, maybe sure. she did, but I don't feel like she was telling that dude oh, I'm about to leave him. I just feel like she was insulted. That's that's how it came across to me. Like, nigga, and are she, you serious right now? I'm out. She like, was I'm not insulted by how he done it? Yeah. Well, that's possible. I, I just, I don't feel like the way, the way that it happened, I just felt like she, she just was just too adamant, too quick. At the end of the video, she began to examine the ring like, yeah, it's cute or whatever. But for the most part, that, that's all it was. It was cute or whatever. But that was a nice size diamond ring. And she ain't want no pause up. And if your, mm -hmm. like you said, if your desire was to get married, now you got it. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I know people who are satisfied with just proposal. Maybe she wanted the whole glitz and glamour, the down on one knee, to call her family together to get everybody, get everybody here. I mean, you know, hey, to each his own. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, if we only have one comment, she said it was probably everything in the hole, but yeah, she definitely yeah. <laughs> I definitely feel that way. I <laughs> definitely feel that way. Okay. What somebody else said? Wait, Jackie's Jackie's live thirteen said a car proposal is ruthless, and after thir after ten years, he should have come up with something better. She probably was done with him. Ten years is a long time. Yeah, I think somewhere along the way, she probably lost mm -hmm. respect for him. Um, she definitely came across like she didn't respect him, and that was just another reason why. Um, so yeah, it's layers to this yeah, relationship. Yeah. Ten years is a long time. And at this point, why he like he said it takes some people more time than others, but why either why either one of y'all there? If your goal was to ever my thing, if your goal is to get married, and if you wait around 10 years, I mean at this point, you might as well you you didn't accept it all the way. So like, why get married now? Like we we going fine, especially if it's if it ain't broke, why fix it after 10 years? Then after two years, you feel that way, then I would have understood. Maybe even three or four, but but after ten years, you like we we good, ain't we? So let me ask y'all this: So do y'all think that um, when people first meet, if they got like a difference, a different outlook on certain stuff, they should just not even deal with each other? Like, say you meet somebody, Siobhan, and he want kids and you don't want kids, you should just leave it alone, right? Instead of the people still I think so. like try to deal with the person even though it like it hopes this won't change and when it don't, you know what I'm saying? It's like a slap in the face. That's just like with the marriage thing. She probably knew he didn't want to get married and you know whatever, still dealt with him. But I mean they shouldn't have dealt with each it seemed like they shouldn't have dealt with each other in the first place. Yeah, I, I agree. When it comes to those foundational things like that, like kids and marriage, like that's that should be deal breakers or non-negotiables because either you do or you don't. Sometimes you can change your mind, but I don't think you should go into it being like, oh, well, maybe I could change the person's well, mind. I, I think, think people do that all too often. Fair. I think people do go in there with either I'm going to change people's mind or people go in there thinking, maybe I won't want this in a year or two. You know what I'm saying? Maybe ah, this person don't want to get married. Ah, maybe I won't want to get married in a couple of years. Or oh, this person don't want to have kids, then maybe I won't want to have kids in a couple of years. I think that's what people come up to. Like, they, they come to that point. But Jackie made a good point. She said, maybe the 10-year dude was a side dude. <laughs> that's true, too. That's true, too. Like, hold, you bro. Know, you you, you yeah. out of pocket. Like, <laughs> Either way, she has another dude. Yeah, yeah, you out of pocket. Okay. 
Shayna mm -hmm. finally got her uh, dream job um, working for an airline, only doing international flights. She goes to every island, uh, all types of islands in the Caribbean, for about the last like two three times out of a week. When she first started uh, going, she used her friends, of course, all would ask them, you know, could you bring me back this? Could you bring me back that? Mostly like the alcohols that uh, that you can't get here in the States. Wherever you go, she was bringing them back. Now, initially, it wasn't a problem, but it became such a problem that Sheena decided to upcharge everybody. She started charging everybody's 20% or whatever she was bringing back. One of their friends, one of her friends ended up going uh, on a trip themselves. They ended up finding out the white Hennessy wasn't $80 in Jamaica when she went. Turns around, it was about, you know, about almost $20 cheaper. She came back and confronted Sheena. Sheena was like, well, I mean, I was bringing it back for you. Her friends, and when she told the rest of her friends, her friends and them felt like, well, you were going there anyway. What's the big deal? So I'm going to ask the panel, do you think it was fair if somebody, if somebody used you based off your job and if you, you know, you decide to charge them simply because of, I guess, you know, uh, the position you have? Uh, uh, T? <laughs> That's the price of business, baby. <laughs> That's a service fee. That's a service fee right there. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, I'm doing you a favor. Yes, I'm already going there, but I'm already going there for another reason. I'm not already going there to get you no liquor. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like she was, it was cool. She could have charged that extra 20 or whatever, because you, what you going to get mad and not get it and then don't have it at all? You going to buy it. So don't complain. Mm -hmm. Just get the shit. <laughs> you don't want it, don't ask. Uh, uh, Siobhan? Yeah, I agree because, you know, when you think of a flight attendant, that they, they pack light, you know, so that they can move around easily. So now you want me to have all of this alcohol that I'm packing, like that's adding more to my my luggage, so I need some type of mm -hmm. compensation yeah. for that. Privacy yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, yeah. I, I agree, but uh, of course, if it's, like I said, if it was once in a blue, I wouldn't have a problem. But now you making it seem like I'm working for you. Like, oh, you going there this week? Oh, you going here? Yeah, yeah grab this for me. Grab that for me. And if y'all know that y'all go to these airports, a whole, if because it's duty free, and especially some of these islands, some of the stuff much cheaper than back here in the States, like or, or cigarettes, especially at the airport. So it's like you making me work for you and you have a problem that I'm charging you a little more. Now, when it's exclusive stuff, I can understand it. But if it was just, you know, uh, 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 something that I can get back here, and basically I'm, a, I'm paying the, the uh, upcharge, I'm actually paying the original price, I mean, you know, go to the store. I'll do the store then, I guess. But I mean, as long as if it's some exclusive stuff, I remember uh, we went to DR and they, they had some white rum. I really like the white rum. I mean, but, and I would, I, it wasn't that expensive and I would pay an extra charge if, if somebody was going. It's like, hey man, you know, it's this, you know, I'm charging this. I'd be like, cool, not a problem. So yeah, I wouldn't have a problem because again, I would do it. I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with paying if I wanted it. I wanted for a service, yeah. Yeah. So Jackie's Life 13 says very fair because now she's Uber Eats. Right. Like, what do I look like? Uh, Big Tokyo says, what I look like running <laughs> a runner, my job pays me. You will too. Miss John says, I believe it is fair. Big Tokyo says, no funky yeah. activity here. Yeah. yeah. But that's how some people feel. You know, you know, you have people who feel like we friends, you shouldn't do this. Because some people feel like I wouldn't do it to you. But I had a friend that every time I would go out of town, she would always ask me to bring her something back. Bring me back a shot glass or bring me back this. And then I end up telling her, I said, I'm not bringing you nothing back because you never go out of town. Like it's hard. <laughs> like I never, I would never get, oh, you going to Europe? I've never been there. Bring me back a shot glass. Oh, you going to uh, the Netherlands? Oh, I've never been. Bring me back a shot. But because you never go nowhere, 
I'm going to always be the only one bringing back T-shirts and stuff like that. So I ended up telling her. Like, you know, and I know she thought, like, you being petty. It's like, nah, you don't go anywhere. I would never get the, I know it's saying tip for tap, but I would never get the favor return. (laughs) It's true, though. I think for me, it's not, it wouldn't be a big deal if it's something I can just put in my suitcase, like a little shot glass or something. But you're talking about alcohol. Like, that's inconveniencing me because it's more stuff for me to carry. So that's the only reason why I will be but like. But every every oh, time you go, all of it's a big deal to me. You know, you know how I feel to be on vacation. You try and relax. You gotta remember to get this person this and then oh, let me stop here, y'all, real quick. I gotta go get this gift. Mm-hmm. Remember, I had to do that when we went to Mexico. Uh-huh. Yeah, I had to keep stopping places and getting stuff. Everybody want me bring them back some. I ain't doing that no more. Yeah, yeah, because it is it is <laughs> an inconvenience. Y'all understand, people? We. As a flight attendant is one thing, but y'all know people always running late for flights. You got to go through TSA. You got to you got to do all these formalities, this and the third as you as you go on. And now I got to stop at the gift shop and try to remember to get some. When I I forgot I could have got it on the island for ten dollars cheaper. They're gonna upcharge me like that. That becomes like expensive. Like nah nah, you gonna pay me. You gonna pay me. <laughs> Mind you, I'm probably intoxicated nine times out of ten, so it's really gonna be hard for you to remember to keep bringing your stuff back. So you, need, you need to take that into account when you're complaining. I did this while I was alleviated. So you know. <laughs> okay. So there was there was this survey, and it was basing off of uh, the women who were married. They were saying uh, majority women from other ethnicities, uh, white, Hispanic, and so forth, most of them go to college to look for men. Like most of them, when they go to college, they look for men. They said black women have the lowest uh, merge rate because when they go to college, they go to college preparing not to uh, uh, not to need a man. So the, the, the rates, I made sure I wrote them down. For the rates, is Asian women were 61%, white women were 55, Hispanic were 48, and black women were 31. So my question to the panel, and of course I'm starting with you, Siobhan, do you think women need to change their viewpoint when going to school and thinking about the future and basically maybe meeting your potential mate then? I don't, I think, I feel insulted. Like that's, I don't think that's true that black women go to college to not need a man. Says who? Like where did they get that from? I don't, I don't think that's true. I know women who meet their husbands at college. So we go to college to get an education. Like I'm not going to find a man, but if he there though, you know, then we can, we can hook up. So I don't, I don't know one, I don't know where they get that from. And um, people go to college for different reasons. So I don't think you necessarily have to change your thought process about it. Like go to college to go to school and then you meet people. And then what happens after that, it happens. Like, I think that's, I just want to know where they get that from. Where's the, where, where they get that narrative from? Cause I don't agree with that. I mean, I could agree. I agree with Siobhan, but I'm laughing because I kind of see what they saying. <laughs> like, but I see it for a different reason. I see it cause it's like, the upbringing is different for black women than white women and any other ethnicity. You know, y'all got to get it out of the mud, you know what I'm saying? So you going to college to further your education, to be successful. And I guess to them, that equates to not needing a man. That's helping, making it so you don't need a man. And when in actuality, that's not what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's so you can be successful. When you get out of college, then you, if you, if you don't meet them in college and you meet them after college, now you got a good foundation. Both of y'all probably got a good foundation to build on. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I see where they trying to, why they trying to say that, but it's, I think it's the wrong reason. I don't think that's what y'all are doing at all. You know, so I don't agree with that. Mm-mm. Um, I kind of agree with it in a, in a sense, and this is why. Um, I, I feel like I contribute to it when it comes to just my daughter. Like, when she, you know, going off to school, I'm preaching of, you know, I, I told her this on many, many occasions, like, I want you to not need anybody. That's like my my saying. Like, it's it's plenty of time, hey, look, I want you to be in position so you don't need nobody. 
And I don't know if it's more of, I want you to have your own. So I do understand that some, we, we, we talk about this, some women and some other groups of what's name, that's when they're really trying to lock down a man. They're not trying to lock down a career. They're trying to lock down a man. Most of these athletes that y'all see that, and not, not judging them, but most of these athletes that y'all see, these uh, basketball players and football players, and they married to these white women, nine out of 10 times, the white women locked them down in college. These ain't these ain't new. But that's, my, but that's kind of my point, and what I'm saying, like how you said, you tell your daughter, you know, I don't want you to need nobody and stuff like that. The upbringing, how they brought up, them white women is is bred to to go out there and be someone's, you know, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. So they that's why they going there looking for that because they getting taught to do that. Find that man, find that ball player, find da 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 da. You feel me? But I don't think. Yeah. So I agree. I agree that culturally there are cultures that, that tell you to do that. I think my issue is with, it's like us being told like that we don't need a man. I don't think that's our intention when we go to school is what I'm, what I'm saying. I know that you're saying you tell your daughter to be independent, but to me, it's, it's still a different message to say, I, you don't need a man and you go to school so that you well, don't need a man. You I just don't. Don't. I, I feel like when it that comes to nice. with uh, 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 black women, and when we say you don't need a man, we we don't elaborate that we're talking about financial. Like 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 we don't want you. I, me personally, as a father, having to, I my mindset. I I grew up in in a different society, doing different things, and I never wanted my daughter to have to depend on a guy. Basically. So me telling her to go, like, look, I want you to never, I want you to have your own. I don't want you to have to ever depend on the dude. I don't want you, I need you to end them books. I need you to make sure that you get this degree. That is my focus. But it's it's more, and, and I guess it's, it comes down to a conversation, like you said, T, about parents and upbringing of trying to get them to understand that thin line of need and depend. Like, I don't want you to have to depend on a guy but having a guy is another thing. But I don't think we, I feel like with other groups of people, they literally go down there and they're chasing. Like, I feel like black women meet guys in college. Other ethnicities <laughs> chase guys in college. So I think it's a difference. So look, I can't, I can't relate. Let me just say that because I was taught to be independent, independent, and I was chasing men in college, so I don't understand. I that's it. I don't. So that's that's it. <laughs> so I guess that's why I'm like, no, that's yeah. not true. You know, because yeah. okay. I did both. What they say in them comments? Um. So big two. You going? You not wait to this? What? Hold on. That's why I don't tell anybody. Okay. Um. So Big Tokyo says, yeah, I don't think people intentionally go to meet a mate. It's not the overall goal. Jackie's life said, I think it's true, especially for Indian and white people. Big Tokyo says, right, Reggie, that's exactly what I tell mine. Jackie's life, those white prey on the athletes, the Indian women go to find the doctors yeah. and engineers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've definitely, you know, read about other cultures and, and them being taught to yeah. go and... But um, I think like T said, things. though, yeah. when you when you don't come from a certain struggle, your 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 gods can be down a whole lot more. And and when you come from a struggle where, you know, uh, any wrong turn, you know, you don't know where your next meal coming from. At time. Like, I don't know if I could get some more money from like I got to stay on these books if I lose this grant. I'm done or whatever, however they got, you know what I'm saying? So I think it comes from that versus some person who can just depend back on their parents to make sure that they're, hey, don't worry about it. You're get it next time. Like, you know, I guess that's where it comes from, you know. I think so. It could depend on your upbringing. Like if you yeah. came from a two parent household, you may have been encouraged to, you know, yeah. even in a black family, you could have been encouraged to, you know, find your mate because a lot of people. Yeah, find yeah I'm sure. Mate. I'm sure some. I'm sure it's not a cut and dry. Everybody, everybody. Like I said, the percentages was you know, 
Finish was separated from the top to the bottom with black and in Asia. And then we also got to remember the rate of basically everybody also. Because if everybody's only, and I think, and we none of us never did or thought about this, if the rates is based off of the type of college you go to and the percentage of your ethnicity at that college, that plays a huge part. Because if you do have like black guys who only date black women and black women who only date black guys, but they go to a predominantly white college, you know, it's like slimmer pickings for them versus, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, somebody who go to an HBCU. You know what I'm saying? Or, or like I said, uh, some of these uh, uh, agents, of course, they stick with their kind. So they basically, you know, both of them have the same goal. That Asian man, that Asian woman have the same goal. Where this black dude, he might don't have that goal to get married. So now you kind of date in here and then, and y'all, you know, this, that, and third. So I think all that plays a part. What Big Tokyo say? She said I wasn't. My dad told me always have my own, whether I'm with someone or alone. Yeah, my grandmother definitely told me to have my own, but I was chasing <laughs> it, So Okay. <laughs> um, Tori Spelling, do y'all know who she is? Yeah. See, the Tori Spelling, um, she was a, she one of the cast members from the TV show 90210 came out back in the 90s. Okay, she has a new show called Love at First Live. They had a black couple on there. So she asked the husband, or uh, I'll she asked, I apologize, I didn't get whether it was her husband or just her boyfriend. But she asked her, her mate, she asked him, do you know who your, uh, do you know who your girlfriend's uh, crush is, secret crush is? He said, yeah, it's Obama, nonchalantly. She said, well, why would he be a secret crush? He said, because I know she got a thing for him, this, that, and the third. She read all the cotton. She said, well, that's not actually it. She was like, her actual secret crush is your oldest brother. Oh, oh she put his head down and like, the show just kind of went to a clip. But I never got what happened because I was just looking at a clip of it. Well, my question to you, and I'm gonna start with you, T. If you were dating someone and you found out that your mate had a crush on not not even one of your your relatives or one of your friends, someone that's closer in age, would you have a problem and still date them? What, what do you what do you do with that, man? What do you really do with that? That's 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 like <laughs> that can go left so many times, so many ways. <laughs> with dealing with me anyway. Um, you know my initial answer was I would slap the shit out of somebody. That's always my initial answer. But I'm trying to shy away from that, even though I just said it. But um Man, that's tough. Like, why would she even get on the show and say that? Why you couldn't just let it be on I gotta show? see you don't say that. I, I right. gotta look at the whole show to see how but you can see that it was like oof. Like I mean That's like, disrespectful. What? We not together no more after this? <laughs> I definitely can't trust it. I can't trust it at all. I'm gonna have to go and end it, and, and or so we could just have casual sex, and that way you could go ahead and sleep with my brother too, and, and I'm on mine. Now it's just you know whatever. God, man, that's tough right there. You seem man. like you hurt behind that. <laughs> I'm gonna send it to both y'all. No, to Siobhan, I send it to her. She mess around and uh, find the whole clip and everything. So Shabon, I'm, I'm trying exactly. I'm gonna try to hit her family or something when we get off. Yeah, the that's school. that. The, some things you just don't need to say. Like that's too close for comfort. You don't ever reveal that you got a crush on somebody's family member, or anybody that they know, and know that you can reach. You know that you have the ability to get to them if you wanted to like a celebrity is one thing but somebody that's living in a neighborhood or you work with or in the family like that's just just shut up don't tell nobody that especially not on what are you doing if you happen to hear it and find out about it through let's say let's say uh 
a, a wrong text. So you went through the phone or something like that, and you find out he telling one of his boys that he got a crush on one of your relatives that's that's near or one of the, your like friends. I'm not gonna be able to bounce back from that because I can't Ooh. unsee it. Like I can't unknow that you wanna get with my cousin. Like at this point, <laughs> you wanna be with her. Like that's how I feel. I can't. Oh, mm -hmm. No, no. I'm still messed up at it. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I send it to y'all. Like, like, every time I brought you around him, you was lusting over my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, that's what you think. Dang. I just can't. Yeah. What else? How else should I think about it? If you got a secret crush, like crushes are strong. Yeah. You want them? Um, no, that's not. Mm -mm. I don't. I, no. I don't. I don't know if I if I. It all depends, I guess, how me and this person relationship is. I know you're looking at me weird, Siobhan, but that's not true because I, yes. I don't, I don't <laughs> feel like people stop like having eyes because you know, or because we like each other. Now to say it, I'm with you, Siobhan. For you to mention it, meaning that it's wrong, but for me to yes, find out. It's like, or you, because it's like, it's like you just saying, you know, T saying Rez. Man, I think your girl attractive as much. Like, I just no, don't. No, you don't say no shit. Like, I wouldn't say no shit like that. Yeah, but I'm just that saying. Sounds, I'm, I'm about to apologize to you, and I ain't even saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. But I don't I'm know. Really, I just really don't feel that. I don't. I don't feel that ownership, and I just feel that ownership like a crush. A crush. You just. Your brother, your best friend. Do you friend, think my cousin, cousin my brother, whatever looks attractive? It's I don't one know. thing for her to think he looks attractive, but it's another thing to have a crush on him. A crush is stronger than finding yes. somebody attractive. I think that's crush is like yes, you want to see what that thing about. That's what mm -hmm. crush is. I don't agree yeah. with y'all. I think that's mm -hmm. good. She attractive. Okay, cool. You think she look pretty, but nah, you got a crush on her. You try and see what, what's up with her. I think that's one yeah, of the same. Yes. That's what the crush is. That's not the same. I think it's one of the same. I think it's I think to have a I feel like having a crush and finding somebody attractive is one and the same. I I just do. Like for me to say I got a crush mm. on uh me alone and find her attractive is yeah, one of the same. Let me ask you this, Riz. I know you done seen some women before and was like, oh yeah, she attractive, but I wouldn't mess with her though. But she is attractive young lady, she's just not for me. And then you seen some that you had a crush on, and it's like, yeah. Oh, did I want it? But yeah, I that's a crush. That's the same, though. I don't. I that's mean, I can understand. I can understand your point. I can understand you saying it's it's some women where I felt like, oh, like yeah, I, I <laughs> holler at Shawty, and there's some women I thought was cute that I wouldn't holler at, but I can still just find someone attractive and don't holler at her simply because. That that that's so and so people's like I she's just trying to like I won't holler at her because it's so and so people that I don't mean I I don't know I just don't feel that like yeah Jack you fantasize about a crush you do you, you do. like it's deeper making love to your girl Riz, and she over there thinking about your brother why cause she got a crush on him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, any any crush that I've had, he could get it. That's 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 yeah, a little yeah. different. I just mm -hmm. don't feel like that crush is that much more. Like okay, like I don't know. I just so so like you said, you had a crush and Damn. you said he could get it, but you've been in a relationship saying mm -hmm. he can't, or is that every time you have a crush, you just going at a dude? So it don't at that point, it just it just. To know somebody can was sleep with who? You, who's the dude from Power? You like Omarion Hardwick? Just Omari because Hardwick. you yeah. you would you like him? You he can get it. It I would risk it all, even if I was yeah, in yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to well, say. I'm crushes <laughs> are strong. But I'm saying that's somebody who <laughs> would risk it all. But I'm sure you got some crush. But you like I wouldn't risk it for that nigga. Like if that, but. It's not a crush to me then. I agree with you. That ain't no crush. <laughs> we yeah. we gonna this is the one time we all we're gonna agree to disagree. I'm not even, I'm not even okay. just going to get y'all. I just don't 
I don't know. I just feel like people have physical attractions where they really like somebody, and it's just like, well, like you can't get them, like. Man, crush, crush something serious. Okay. You get caught up with a crush race. You might be with your girl, and you got a crush on another bro. You you flirting with the little other bro a little too much. You been a little too friendly. That's that crush <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> The crush yeah, can become yeah, a sneaky thing. Why you going to the door for her so much? That's yeah. what the girl going to say. Why you going to the door for her? Hey, you going to the door for me. You know what I'm saying? You going to do too much for that crush. Yeah. So, Big Tokyo said she could have lost her life. Jackie's life said exactly. <laughs> she said, but crushing is less than. Big Tokyo says Reggie is deeper than that. Uh, Jackie said, you fantasize about a crush. Yeah, your crush. Big Tokyo says, period, Siobhan, Jackie's like, a crush is a risk, for sure. And Big Tokyo mm. says, right, Jackie. I guess. I guess. This one that we, I just really don't, I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm cocky and arrogant in a way where I just like, oh, you think that nigga cute? Yeah. Nigga, I'm cute. Like, I don't care. Okay, like, so would you, since you don't find, so since you don't think it's that much big of a deal, would you have them around each other anymore? Um, let me tell you this, T. I'm somebody I need, I need I need for you to have this temptation to know because this ain't this ain't gonna be the last crush you got. And if if you would if I need I need you to be in in the thick of things. I need for it to be uncomfortable to you for for you to like I just need it. I don't it's it, it will bother me to feel like to know you got this crush and like I, I just can't see him. And I'm telling you this honest, I feel that way. When somebody got a crush, like if I was dating somebody, they'd be like, man, I got a crush. Like, I, I need you to go see, figure that out. I just do. Like, but if you feel like I'm cool with it, I just thought it was cute or whatever. Like, I can, I, can go, I can go on about my business. I could. That's just me. That's just me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Y'all know how to agree. Ricky and Kathy have been married for 15 years, been together for 17. Now, Ricky and Kathy was previously married, was actually the cause of their divorce. During COVID, Kathy caught COVID and was actually severe and could have passed away, but through the grace, she, she survived. Now, for the 15 years they've been married, they've been living in Kathy, Catherine's house but Ricky has actually been the one paying the bill. He actually put in money in the joint bank account, which helps pay the mortgage. Now, after uh, finding out that, you know, she could have passed, but even though she bounced back, he's starting to, he began to ask her about why he wasn't on the deed. What would happen? She told him that she wanted to leave the house to her kids. He feel like because the kids don't really care for him, because the kids don't really care for him because he was part of part of the reason why her parents got divorced. He feels like if something would have happened, the kids would have put him out. Vice versa with him or, or her, she feels as though because your kids don't care for me and, and my kids, uh, your kids don't care for me and you don't care for my kids, I don't want to put you on the house and I feel like you will put your kids on the deed if something was to happen to me. So both of them wondering what should they do about this whole situation when it comes to this house? Javon? I think I'm confused. You said he's the reason why her so parents got Rick divorced? and Kathleen been married for 15 years, been together for 17. Catherine and Ricky was previously married. Mm -hmm. Catherine kids don't like Ricky and Ricky kids don't like Catherine because in their previous relationships, they were each oh. other's sneaky link. So because of that, oh, after it. she okay. got sick, even though she pulled through, Ricky started wondering about the house and all that stuff, this situation, because she didn't, he didn't know she was going to pull through. So he realized that he wasn't on the deed of the house. Now he wanted to Yeah, I got that. I got that part. I got it. I just didn't understand the... Yeah. Um, so I so I'm I'm assuming that when they got married, yes, she that I was her that. house. Ricky I'm moved in with because with her. Okay. Um that's I mean, I don't know what they're gonna do because that's something that you gotta that you gotta discuss. I mean, she bought the house before they got 
married or whatever they got together so they just don't have to work that out i mean what is i can understand her wanting to give the house to her her children like so i don't know do, i mean do they have life insurance just get the life insurance and do, go buy your <laughs> house i don't know <laughs> that's a sticky situation with these kids and stuff and they don't like him that's that's the but they need to figure it yeah. out before you know i hope thankfully she feels better but they do need to I figure that kind of going. stuff out and and even if it's not in the d you need to have a will to say this is what it's going to be but they need to work that out because that's going to be some drama after mm -hmm. she passes away i already got to see it out <laughs> you said he the one who was paying put money all into the house and paying for everything he, he, stuff. He, they have a joint bank account where they pay the bills but he pays he puts the most in there so he's basically mm -hmm. feel like he's paying majority of the bills which is the mortgage Exactly. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm Ricky. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take my money out and just get my own place somewhere. <laughs> Since you pulled through COVID, you can make it without me. Now, <laughs> we shouldn't have got married in the first place. Our kids don't even. Our kids don't even like we don't. You know that's it's not, this is not the Brady Bunch over here. They hate each other and all this and all that. So I might as well just go ahead and leave. Now I know that I'm not on this deed. I'm really feeling some type of way. And you lucky I ain't smothered you with that pillow you was laying on. <laughs> oh. That's crazy. You ain't gonna put me on D. So I'm gonna take my money out. I'm gonna find my own place. Forget yeah. it. So maybe if they was to get divorced, then he can ask for the house that way. I mean, that's petty, yeah. but because <laughs> the kid ain't gonna go to the mm -hmm. kids during that during the divorce um, proceedings. I understand his gripe. I understand his gripe simply because, like I said, he's been paying majority of the bills. He thinking like we together, we're a couple. This is our house, and this and the third. And and like I said, if she if she was the past, and them kids get their house, you already don't like me. So most likely, you gonna tell me I gotta go. So my thing would be with with Siobhan mm -hmm. said also, I feel like he should have, we need to put this in the wheel. We need to put it in the wheel one and we also either need to get life insurance. So like you said, if something was to happen to one or the other one, you know, I could just go buy me another house somewhere else. But my issue also come down to his kids. And I think for me, I would have a problem that I'm actually paying the bill in a house that will be left for those kids, but my kids don't get anything. So I, I don't think we could stay in this relationship without at least my kids being on this because I'm fitting the bill. Well, I can't deal with that, Rich. But I mean, mm -hmm. those her kids. Yeah. His kids ain't her kids. She ain't got but to. I'm, if she passed, but if she but if she passed, she don't got to leave them nothing. That's for him to leave his kids something. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's her so choice if she's going to leave them something. That's why I'm saying with him, that's why I would have to leave. Because at the end of the day, my kids ain't going to have anything. <laughs> like, like, if, like I said, if, if some years go past, my her house will be paid off. If we both pass, her kids will get a house. My kids wouldn't get anything. And I will find that to be a problem. So I guess that should have been a, a earlier discussion of like oh let's let's understand this because maybe we should have bought some rental property or again like siobhan always say sell a house buy a new one and that way it could be split 50 50. yeah i don't think they were supposed to be together anyway but that's that relationship was forged in sin that was <laughs> when she caught COVID. that was god giving them a scare so he could look at the deed and have a reason to leave I think he needs to go ahead and walk through that door that the Lord is open for him. <laughs> I think I think he's gonna have to cut his losses as far as his house is concerned. That lady gonna get a house to them kids. He gonna lose that battle. But I think they both need life insurance so that in the event that he passes away, that his kids get something, and then if she passes away, then he still gets something mm -hmm. from it. See, that's why I don't like all that marriage and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It could just be with yours is yours and with mine is mine. While we together, even, hey, while we together even, hours, we, need, we take what we came with. But, but marriage is always if you, you live in that house for fifteen years paying the rent. I mean, that's still a, that's still the same case whether y'all married or not. I'm gonna do what Siobhan said. We going to court. <laughs> I need something. 
<laughs> why she's alive. <laughs> Oh man! So Big Tokyo says my kids getting sorry, not sorry. Uh, she says, "Man, he paid for his room and board. Uh, uh-uh. uh, get somebody else to do it." <laughs> and then she says, "Prenup." Jackie's life said, "But was he just paying it while she was sick?" Oh, you've been paying, like before, been paying before she since got been sick. Living there for was... fifteen years since they've been married. Hmm. Uh, Big Tokyo says, that's her house, point blank. Go and get yeah. your own box. <laughs> she said, it's a generational thing, and if the kids don't like me, I can't <laughs> get yeah. jiggy with yeah. it. <laughs> Sometimes that's a deal breaker to some people. <laughs> I mean, to each his own. Okay, last question. Yeah. A Mexican woman named Lenora A, that's what they said, was married to Juan N. Lenora came home and found some sexy pictures of Juan having sex on his, on his phone with a woman. She stabbed him a few times. Mm-mm. As she got the knife away, he's trying to figure out what's her gripe. I promise you I'll sing out these stories because I know y'all think this one is fake, but I had, I had to look this one mm-hmm. up. So the door comes home. She finds these sexy pictures on Juan's phone. She grabs a knife. She gets to stab him. When he finally wears the uh, knife away from her, He's trying to figure out what's the problem. She begins to tell him about these pictures that he had on the phone that he had sex, that he was having sex with her. What she didn't realize, the pictures was of her years ago. She was much smaller. Oh my God. So my question to you all, y'all can ask sure. any way y'all want is about the whole thing. My question to the panel is, and Mr. Uh, Trainer T, do you believe that it's your responsibility to stay as attractive as possible for your mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you. I mean, in reality, you want to do that. I mean, you want to. You want to uh, look like I guess how that you look when they first met you or whatever. But I mean, things are gonna change. I mean, the hardest part would be how do you tell your mate like, you know, you let's me. go work out. <laughs> you gain some weight. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. That's the hard part. Or whatever, but hold on. How's she gonna stab him and then talk to him about it? Why he bleeding? I don't she should have been going. They anyway. locked her up. The pictures was her with them handcuffs on. <laughs> so she was smaller, and she and she in the pictures or something. Picture, the picture. I don't she, know how she was in the picture, but the picture of her that they had her in handcuffs. She was bigger. She was big. So I don't know if she was smaller back then, but I know she was uh, bigger in the picture that they had. Handcuff. I would just stab her back. <laughs> oh my god! Not like to kill me, but <laughs> no. I gotta at least get my lick back. You're not about to stab me, and I, mm-hmm. I gotta this is stab awesome. you something. You that ain't the first time she tried to stab him. Um, I'm still stuck on the scenario. You said, "Is, is your, it is your responsibility is, to as feel... as possible for your mate?" Do you believe, do you believe you're like, you should try to look your best for your mate for all time to come? So that's why I'm not in a relationship because I'm not going to be focusing on that. If I want to eat the cookie and the chips and stuff and get a, get a little gut, that's what I'm going to do. So either he going to take the stomach that I got or, so or not. So no. You can't get mad at him when he make jokes. And so you, know, <laughs> so, no, you can't get mad at him making jokes. And stuff. What'd you say? Look, you, this, you going to get whatever body I give you. So you need to be prepared for that. That's all I'm saying. Because I'm not going to be putting in that effort for you like that. Because I don't feel I... like it. Yeah. I'm going a, I'm to a do what I want to do for me. So if I if that means that I want to lose weight, then I'm gonna do it. But it's not. I feel me. like it is your responsibility if y'all decide <laughs> to go long way. If you're getting married, um, I feel like especially for men, men are visual creatures. Um, don't be complaining about his wondering I if this you you done blew up for whatever reason because sometimes it's out of your control. Sometimes it's kids, old age. Sometimes it's work, sometimes it's stress. It's out of your control and sometimes. But I do think you hold a certain type of responsibility to try to look your best for your mate as much as you can. That's just my opinion. I don't see nothing wrong. If I feel like when, if for my mate, I want her to look at me 
in that sexy way. I, I know, like I said, old age catch up with you. Everything else start to go south. And it's harder for you to get in shape and stay in shape as you get older. But my thing will be my effort that I give to show that I'm trying my best to make sure. Because I, I want to show the best version of me all the time. Yeah. But I think for me, I don't want to have in the back of my mind if I gain weight, he's going to leave. Like, I just don't desire to have those kind of thoughts. So I'd rather be with someone who is fine with my weight fluctuating um, and love me for who I am as opposed to, oh, I got to look a certain way and fit, fit in a certain box. I don't want to be held to those kind of Those things. are this my beginning questions. Go ahead. This is my thing. Because even, even if I was dating a larger woman, when I first met her, I, I liked her because she was a larger woman. I might not want her to get skinny. You know what I'm saying? She started losing too much weight. Then I got a problem with that. So I just feel like however, whatever attracted me to you, I feel like you should, or vice versa, we should try to uh, uphold that to some standard a little bit, try to stay in, within that realm. Let's not get too out of hand. You know what I'm saying? Because then that's not what I was attracted to anymore. Mm -hmm. I went without. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to say this to each his own. I think some of these are questions that you should talk about early on. You should talk about because, like, like people, you know, women has preference. Women don't want they show guys, and some men don't want they big women. So that's a preference. Like people have a preference. Like some people don't like tall women. Some people don't like short women. Like we we all have the preference, and I think when you meet somebody based off of your preference, these need to be conversations that y'all need to have. I think it, it have to be some realistic type text behind that because like I said, if you are a 32 year old woman and you have three kids, two kids or whatever back to back, nine out of 10 times, this is new weight that you wasn't used to and you get slower and lazier because you weren't used to it and you're gonna get bigger. So, you know, but I think these are conversations that definitely needed to be had. Go ahead, read them comments real quick. Yeah. Um, Big Tokyo says, that's cute, but it's not always reality for someone to love you and not be attracted to you. Yeah, so that's why. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. Um, Jackie's Life says, as long as we still uh, able to get it in with no issues, we should be good. And she said, that's right, Siobhan. Big Tokyo says, baby, it's for both of us. Yes, you heard our Ke you heard Kelly Rowland. I promise y'all I keep myself up, remain the same. You know the rest, Siobhan. <laughs> I, know that I don't song. know that song. Um, so I, don't, <laughs> that song that? <laughs> I don't know that song. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's cute, but it's not always reality for someone to love you and try to. Yeah, okay. So y'all know what time it is. It's the Dating 101 card game. Y'all know if y'all ain't got the first deck, these are really the original, should have been the first deck we came out with. These cards are about 101 questions you should ask yourself before dating because it actually helps you go into the dating process a whole lot better. These are 101 card game, a question you should ask yourself. So the question to the panel is this. I feel like now, before I, I always got to get this, uh, say this, I feel like these are very good questions you also can ask while you're on a date for a person to know how you feel. So the question I'm going to ask is this, what am I expecting my partner to provide in my next relationship? Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't <laughs> I don't know because I don't want a next relationship, so I can't think about it. But uh, so yeah, nothing, huh? You said think outside the box. I want him to cater to me. Um, I want him to be romantic and just like very sensual, romantic and sensual. Okay. I love that. See. <laughs> I don't have nothing bad to say. Um, I'm really not expecting anything, but uh, some understanding. I'll say I I would want them to be more like understanding because, and what I mean by that is because I'm like a a solitary person. Like I don't mind being by myself or 
you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I need time to myself and I need the person to be able to understand like, okay, maybe he just needed a day or whatever, you know? And you don't find that a lot. So I would like for that to, for it to be like that. Okay. What about you? Um, I don't think I, I, I necessarily need stuff. I, I'm, I'm kind of in the midst of, I need you not to disrupt my peace. That's it. Like if we decide to date, I just need you to understand to this not rub my pee. Don't come in there and want to remake me of who I told you I was. Like when I'm when I tell you who I am, that's why I am. Yeah. Don't come in and say, Yeah, maybe you should do something different. No, nah, I'm peaceful right here. This is this is my my peaceful. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I, I would need you to come in and not disrupt, not take from what I already built as far as with my peace and how I choose to live my life. I'm exp I'm going to take the dating one-on-one -on -one cards so I will explain to you what my likes and dislikes is. So, <laughs> so make sure you don't take, you know these likes and dislikes and that way you won't take away from my peace. What they said in the comments real quick before we get off? Uh, Big Tokyo says loyal and genuine. Ao says consistency okay. and patience. Uh, thanks for everybody for joining. Mm -hmm. Definitely for the comments, Big Tokyo, Jack, Ao, baby. Um, thanks for everybody coming out again. This is the homeboys conversation with the dating one on one card game. If y'all couldn't get y'all cards again, go to the dating one on one card games. You can get these. You can get the dating one on one card games as well as. The out the dock. He's just for them late nights when you and them finally want to get it in, get it in. <laughs> <laughs> so thank y'all. We'll see y'all next week. Peace out. <laughs> Join us every Monday at 9 p.m. on IG Live for Homeboys Conversation After Dark with Dating 101 Card Game. And make sure you like, comment, and share.